Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on testing the assumptions for the Wilcoxon Sign Rank Test in SPSS. As always, if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. I certainly appreciate it. I have here in the SPSS data editor fictitious data that I'll be using for this example. And I have an ID number here, first variable, that has 50 records, and then a pretest and post-test variable. So let's assume that the pretest and post-test scores come from a depression inventory administered to clients at different times. So for this record 1001, for this participant, you have the pretest administered before, let's say, individual counseling using existential therapy, and then the post-test administered after that therapy. So both of these scores are generated from the same participant. This is a within subjects design. Now at the pretest and post-test variables measured at the continuous level of measurement, if I go here to the variable view, you can see they are both scale, both set at scale. We would typically think of a paired samples t-test or dependent samples t-test for analyzing data such as these. So if we move here to analyze, we'll go to descriptive statistics and explore to test the normality assumption for the paired samples t-test. So I'm going to move the pretest and post-test variables over to the dependent list list box. Then under plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf and I'm going to check off the histogram and the normality plots with tests and click continue and then click OK. So this is just to check the normality of each variable and we can see the skewness and kurtosis are within bounds for both variables but here taking a look at the Shapiro-Wilk probability value for pretest it's statistically significant it's below 0.05 0.016, although the post-test appears to be normally distributed based on the results of Shapiro-Wilk. If we look at the histogram here for pretest, there's a bit of a negative tail. And if we look at the histogram for the post-test, the variable does appear to be normally distributed. So let's assume that we're worried about that non-normality finding the statistically significant result here for Shapiro-Wilk for paired samples t-test. Now, of course, you could make a good argument that the paired samples t-test is robust to violations of normality, particularly when we have 50 matched pairs, as we do here. And, of course, the post-test appears to be normally distributed, even though the pretest is not. But still, let's say that we're worried about that result and we don't have confidence in how robust the paired samples t-test would be to that violation of normality, and we still want to determine if there's a statistically significant improvement from pretest to post-test. In this situation, we could use the Wilcoxon sign rank test. It's a non-parametric alternative to the paired samples t-test. We have two related groups, pretest and post-test. These represent one dependent variable that is intrinsically continuous. We have more than the minimum required numbers of pairs of observations. Five is the minimum, five pairs of observations, and we have 50 in this analysis. We will also assume that the paired samples are random and independent. So that means that each pair is random and independent, not each observation in a pair. So we would expect, for example, this post-test score of 42 for record 1 for participant 1001. This would be dependent on the pretest score of 44. These two records, pretest and post-test, are related. They are dependent. However, for each pair, we would expect the pairs to be random and independent. 
So there's just one assumption left for the Wilcoxon sign rank test, and that's the assumption of symmetrical distribution. And I'm going to test that now before performing the actual test. So we have this pretest variable and this post-test variable. In order to test the assumption of symmetrical distribution, I need to create a third variable based on these two variables. So I'm going to go to transform, compute variable, and I'm going to name this target variable. And I'm going to call this difference. And this numeric expression is fairly straightforward. It's pretest minus post test. So the difference between the pretest and the post test. And I'm going to click OK. And that's going to create this new variable that contains all the differences between the pairs. It's this new variable that I'm going to test to make sure the distribution is symmetrical. So I'm going to go here to Graphs, Chart Builder, and the bottom left, I'm going to choose Box Plot, and there are three different box plots here. Simple, Clustered, and One Dimensional. I'm going to select the One Dimensional box plot and drag that in to this area on the top right of the Chart Builder dialog. This just has room for one variable, the x-axis. And that's going to be this difference variable. So drop that in and click OK. And we are assessing whether these data meet the assumption of symmetrical distribution based on this box plot. And what I'm looking for here, we have the median line. And I'm looking to see that the area above the median line is symmetrical with the area below the median line. So you have the interquartile range, this rectangle, and then the whiskers. And you can see just by looking at this box plot that these two regions do appear to be similar. So I would say these data do meet the assumption of symmetrical distribution for the Wilcoxon sign rank test. So now to perform the test, go to Analyze, Non-Parametric Tests, the Wilcoxon sign rank test is a non-parametric statistic. Over to Legacy Dialogues, and this is two related samples. And here is the dialog for two related samples tests. And I have variable one and variable two here. It's going to be pretest and post-test. By default, the test type is set to Wilcoxon. And under Options, I'm just going to add the descriptive statistics. Click Continue and click OK. So you can see here you have the sample size, the mean, the standard deviation, the minimum and maximum value for both the pretest and the post-test. Then we have the ranks. And you can see we have 37 negative ranks, 11 positive ranks, and two ties. We have a negative rank when the post-test is less than the pretest. You can see that down here under A, next to A. Have a, B, and C. A is post-test, less than pretest. That's the negative rank. Positive rank would be when the post-test is greater than the pretest. And of course, a tie is when the post-test is equal to the pretest. Now we would hope, based on our research design and what we were looking for, we would hope that the therapy was effective and we'd have mostly negative ranks. That is, the post-test would be lower than the pretest in most of the pairs. And in fact, that's what we have, 37 negative ranks. So moving down to test statistics, looking at the p-value for the Wilcoxon sign rank test, 0 0.001, so it's less than 0 0.05. So we would reject the null hypothesis that the median differences between pairs of observations are equal. So that's what this p-value here for the Wilcoxon sign rank test is telling us. It's telling us about the median differences. If we had run a paired samples t-test, that would be telling us about mean differences 
between the pairs of observations. But for the Wilcoxon sign rank test, it's median differences. I hope you found this video on testing the assumptions for the Wilcoxon sign rank test to be useful. Thanks for watching.